Hey there, friends. Well, I got a call from um, a friend of mine that uh, there's a, he lives in an area with a unhealthy, unnatural concentration of cougars in the area. I happen to have a valid unfilled cougar tag and yesterday uh, one of his neighbors who is a single mother uh, with a young kid had two cougars in her backyard and we've been talking literally for months and I haven't been able to make it up there but the neighbors have been saying daily that um, that they're seeing cougars um, one neighbor actually told me that that uh, he saw seven cougars in one tree at one time and uh, that's very abnormal so I'm gonna head up there and see if um, I can't fill my cougar tag but it's these types of situations and these uh, huge concentrations of, of cougars and predators in general that is why uh, it's important for us to have and retain the right to have legal regulated hunting and trapping for for predators um, hunters and trappers are a tool of the uh, fish and wildlife departments around the country to help maintain a sustainable uh, population level you know they've got uh, harvest uh, limits that um, that are directly tied to that sustainable management number and uh, hunters and trappers and the like are a big part of maintaining that for having a healthy ecosystem so one of the other things that a lot of people don't realize is cougars are the absolute best of table fare. I, I prefer them to deer or elk and anything and so we have an animal that is in, in, in pretty much all the western states uh, at a very very high population level and they taste great and so from my perspective morally and ethically I think it should be one of the animals that's at the top of hunters list to try to harvest intentionally. You know, most most cougars are taken incidentally while hunting deer and elk, but but uh, because they are overpopulated and they taste great, I am an intentional cougar hunter uh, because it's my favorite thing to eat. So we're gonna go out, head out here, and see if uh, I can do a little grocery shopping and bring home some meat. Now, if you, you've followed me at all, you know that this is not my first go around with cougars, uh, that I am a predator hunter, uh, and I do so respectfully to help manage the population and to keep the balance in our ecosystems. What's different about this hunt is that I've got a new tool in my arsenal. Uh, I've been using um, electronic game calls for predator hunting for years and I've done fairly well with them but uh, a company called Freak Calls, F-R-E-Q Calls, has come up with a new innovation that may change the, the face of uh, electronic game calling. They've created a ultrasonic call. Most of the rest of the calls that are out there play at um, sound sound hertz and decibels that are only that are visible that are made for human ears uh, and we all know that animals hear at much higher frequencies than we do and so we're only playing about you know, into about 20% of the, or excuse me, about 40% of the, the sounds these animals can hear with a normal call. This one plays all the way up into like 50 or 55 decibels or hertz or whatever it is. Uh, think about, you know, the difference in a regular whistle and a dog whistle. And the dog whistle, we can't hear it, but the dogs can hear it. Well, there's a whole lot of sound, 50% more sound that the animals can hear that we don't. 
and this call the freak ultrasonic game call here plays those sounds so this will be my first outing with it i'm actually real excited to see the science is very sound uh the question is whether or not um the animals react differently to it so um yeah i'm actually really excited about getting it out in the field this will be the first outing that i've had with it This cougar was spotted yesterday. Got the freak call down by the base of that tree. It's the only really safe shooting line I had with with um, houses around. So we're going with that for now. I got the stutter rabbit going, and uh, we'll see if we can call some men. Talk to one of the neighbors down the road in this area has a ton of cougar activity uh, and they're saying there's a pretty significant tom so we're late afternoon now um, so I'll be out here for at least uh, an hour and a half see what happens Happened too quick to get on tape, but the freak call did it. I just harvested my cougar. Turn off the call. One shot, first kill with the Fierce Mountain Reaper. Vortex scope, rugged rated bipod. Powers dreadnought suppressor. He came running in and stopped right there. Fourth cat. Looks like a sub adult cat. Female. belly Just running in from this direction I stopped and she saw me so I was trying to turn the camera on and she saw me moving so I went to the gun instead holy shit that was about I would say last time I looked at the call was a little over an hour. So it was probably about 75 minutes into the sequence. Wow. So this is the people that live at the house here. <laughs> what do you guys think about that in your backyard? 
lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the fourth one that I've harvested, and so uh, I had a great call, a new call that I got, oh, and that really did a great job in calling this thing in. So they saw they saw two cougars over here yesterday. I think they're different than this one. This looks like a different cat to me from the ones in the pictures. Here we go. So, I've had the freak call for four days. This was the first time that I put it in the field in a situation that was likely to call in an animal. And I harvested a cat. Now, I've been a user of a different call brand for years. And I've called in three cats and a lot of other animals. Unfortunately, like I said, it, ha it happened so fast that I wasn't able to turn on my camera and then the cat saw me and uh, and so I had to raise my rifle instead of turning on the camera to get the shot in. But what was different about this situation is that normally when I'm using the other brand of call, the animals kind of sneak in you know just kind of they're on a stock and right before they get the to get to the call they get into the low cougar stock and everything if you watch my other videos you would um, you, you'd see that this cat ran in like ran full speed in uh, and the only thing that I can I can Tribute to the difference in that response and this cat didn't look hungry it had a full belly and so for a cat that's eating well and not hungry and has a full belly to run in like that there's something different there's something different about this call um, so this is the first time I put it out in earnest and I've harvested a cougar um, my wife still has a cougar I can get two cougar tags in Oregon at any t time. Uh, in April, I can get another cougar tag for Washington. Um, and so we'll see. And also in late April, I'm going to Idaho for a spring bear hunt. And um, I'm really targeting wolves on that hunt. And so we'll see what we can do in those scenarios. But so far, I'm really impressed with the free call. <laughs> like, some people want to poo-poo the science, but results speak. <laughs>